Okay, so um, Matthew did it for us last week. Uh, so thank you, Matthew, wherever you are. Um, and uh, we're on now to a new chapter in 1 Corinthians. One Corinthians and chapter four. Four, and uh, I'm going to just going to read the first um, five verses. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you, or of man's judgment. Yea, I judge not mine own self, for I know nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that just judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who both will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Um, what you find throughout um, throughout 1 Corinthians is that Paul, when he talks about the apostles, when he talks about um, himself and, 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 and other ministers, is kind of treading this line where on the one hand he's saying... You know, me and Apollos were just were just men, uh, and this is really you know we're just servants. The word that's used here is is minister. The word minister uh, means a servant. It literally, the literal translation means those who laboured at the oar. You know, you've seen these old epic films. Uh, I'm trying to think of one, like say I know Jason and the Argonauts or something like that. We've got all these men all rowing together to get the ship to go in, in, in where they want it to go, and it's hard work. And he's saying, look, that's that's all I am. I'm somebody rowing, I'm rowing. I'm driving the church in a certain direction, in God's direction, and and that's all I am. I'm just a servant. And so on the one hand, saying don't don't esteem men. As if, like, we've just been talking about, like, mm. you know, they're esteeming people like Joseph Smith. You know, he says, I, we're just ministers, we're just servants serving you. So, so on the one hand, he's saying, you know, don't, you know, much of 1 Corinthians is saying that. Look, we, we are just servants, just ministers, nothing, nothing more than that. We're just brothers, the same as you. Um, but then there's this other sort of point that Paul is making, which is, Whilst we're just servants, we have a great responsibility as well. And um, as, as he puts it uh, in verse 1 there, we are stewards of the mysteries of God. Um, what an interesting phrase, stewards of the mysteries of God. Just turn to 1 Timothy uh, chapter 3. One Tim three and verse sixteen, and it says, um, "And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world." received up into glory very important verse particularly if you're witnessing uh if you're witnessing to jw's if you're just witnessing to anybody about who christ is because it starts off with uh i wouldn't start off but, uh, but just at the very beginning there god was manifest in the flesh okay so who was that well it tells us here that he was uh preached unto the gentiles believed on in the world, received up into glory. It can only be Jesus Christ. He was preached to the Gentiles. He uh, was believed on and he was received up into glory in his resurrection. So that's a really important verse. Um, how I remember it is, you know, when you're looking at verses to use, this is just a tip, uh, verses to use when you're witnessing, 
John 3.16, of course, God so loved the world, etc. John 3.16, 1 Timothy 3.16. So it's a good little mm. merry pair. You can put the two together and, and, and go from one to the other. If you're one of those sort of people who really struggles to remember chapter and verse, that's quite a, <laughs> a bit of nodding going on. Yeah, that, it, this is a good way of doing it. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, um, you can even go to 2 Timothy, it says by the, by the way, uh, yeah, 2 Timothy 3.16, this is a little bit of a tangent here, but again, if you're witnessing to people, 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and righteousness. So, Again, if you're witnessing and people saying, you know, oh, well, you know, well, maybe that part of the Bible you can't use it and so on, you're saying, look, all scripture, all the Bible is given by inspiration of God. So just useful ones to have when you're witnessing. It's the 316 sort of memory peg there, which is, I find quite useful. It's, I still, still remember like that. So Paul is, uh, is a minister. And he is also a steward of the mysteries of God. In other words, he's a, he is a steward of the gospel. The gospel explains the mysteries of God. It explains why Jesus came, why he died on a cross, uh, what the point of his resurrection was, all that. All these mysteries, you know, uh, um, God has, raises up teachers, he raises up uh, ministers to expound the word to explain these things, to to bring forth these mysteries and and you know expound really mean, means explain you know to talk about them, to to elaborate upon them and to illustrate them, and so in that sense Paul is um, a steward of the mysteries of God. Again, the word steward here is is very important as well. You know, a steward is someone who is looking after something that belongs to someone else and um, the sense in which Paul is a steward of the gospel is that he has a responsibility to bring forth what that which belongs to Christ you know to to God has made him a steward and a sort of custodian if you like of those precious truths and therefore he's saying you know I've got a responsibility to be a faithful um a faithful steward verse 2 moreover it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful it says so a minister should be a faithful steward of the things of god you know he shouldn't like share some of the things of god some of the bits of the gospel but then hide other things back because it might put people off or because it might you know people might get offended no they're not our things to 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 hold back and do with as we want they belong to him and therefore, we, we, we have a responsibility to be faithful, not just to ministers, pastors, teachers, but Christians in general. We all have a responsibility as the stewards of those things to share them faithfully and say, you know, this is what God has given to me and I'm going to share it faithfully with you. Um, there are other senses in which we are stewards as well. Um, as I've said before, um, we are stewards of our time, we are stewards of our money, we're also stewards of our own body. It's a strange way of thinking about it, but we're stewards of our time in the sense that, you know, the Bible talks about um, redeeming the time uh, in two places, Ephesians 5.16 and Colossians 4.5. In other words, um, getting the time back, the time that we used to give to the devil, time that we used to spend in sin and so on, we are to get that time back and, and use it faithfully for the things of God. Um, so whilst there's not you know, a mandate from the church saying, this is how you must use your time, we are given that responsibility, there's liberty in Christ where where we are able to choose what we do with our time but it's under the understanding that it's actually god's time you know that the, the how we use it is very important and we're responsible to him for that um same with our money uh, we were talking about before 
the the LDS Church, since we're we're talking about them at the moment, and then in our thoughts, uh, one of their stipulations is yes, you must give a tithe, you must give a tenth. It's it's it is mandatory. You, you must do it. It's one of the things that you must obey uh, to gain acceptance with God, as far as they're concerned. But but the Mormons don't have a, a monopoly on that. You know, I mean, I remember um, a chap saying that he'd been in the church where there were some students in there, university students, and the pastor of the church said to them, you must give a tenth of your um, of your student loan. Now, <laughs> that's outrageous. I mean, as he pointed out, it's not even their money. I mean, that's f- frankly theft, you know. But this is, people have this idea in mind, it's a tithe, it's a tenth, I must give it. And, and I've had people say to me, oh, you know, is it right that you have to give a tenth of your money? Your church says you have to give it. And I used to say, well, well, no, you don't have to give it. It's, you know, people choose to give it, but it's a kind of voluntary thing. But the truth is actually, um, it's not that you have to give a tenth of your money to God. The truth is actually that all your money belongs to God. And it's not what, what shall I give to God, but what shall I keep for me? You know, what shall I use for myself? And uh, that is the correct New Testament understanding of us and money, if you like. And money is always a difficult subject to talk about in churches, I think. You know, because there's so many, uh, uh, you see these these rich pastors in America driving around in Cadillacs and so on. You think, oh yeah, as my dad says, all they want is your money. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that, that's the view of a lot of people. But really, the New Testament concept is you, you and I are, are uh, stewards of the money God has given us. Therefore, we must use it wisely. And um, um, I spoke to a, to a minister once who was saying, oh, well, you know, my congregation are complaining because they think I'm spending too much money um, on going on, uh, uh, say it was, money going on holidays abroad and so on. But he said... But it's my money. Well, the, the answer to that is, but yes and no. It is your money in the sense that God gives you the responsibility to decide what you do with it. You know, it's your choice to, to dispense with it as you wish. But it is God's money in the sense that ultimately we are just stewards of what he has given us. And so we must bear that in mind and, 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 and consider it. We are also stewards of our body uh, 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20 says glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's in other words they belong to God but, but early it says ye are not your own so you know our bodies are to be presented to God you know as a, as a sacrifice as a living sacrifice for service in his kingdom so Taking in mind, bearing in mind what we've looked at about stewardship there and those three things that I gave as a consideration, our time, our money, our bodies, we could look at something like, say, uh, smoking. And you could look at it and say, well, you know, is it okay for a Christian to smoke? But then you're asking questions like, okay, so how am I using my time? Uh, How am I using my money? You know the the money that I'm spending on on this. Um, what is it doing to my body? You know, is is it having a damaging effect on the body that is not actually mine, actually belongs to God? You could do the same with something like gluttony. You know, how much time am I spending eating when I should be doing something else? How much money am I spending on food and and uh, when I could be spending God's money on something else? And again, what is it doing to my body? Is it is it is it damaging me? And that's a principle for for all sorts of things in the Christian life, you know. And so I don't think you can be kind of really kind of mandatory about it and, and start setting rules for people. You know, everybody has a personal responsibility to God if they're a Christian. And all you can do really is teach that principle and say, you know, like is it Peter who says, you know, um, you know, I'm, I'm at liberty or I'm free uh, to do all things, but not everything is beneficial. 
you know, now I have to consider, you know, what is beneficial to me, what's a good use of my time, my money, what's going to be beneficial to my to my body. I mean, there are other things as well, um, as we looked at, you know, such as we are stewards of the gospel and so on. But, uh, yeah, absolutely fundamental for a Christian, how you use your time, how you use your money, how you use your body. And that's, that's the other thing is, is, if I've got the time, the money, and my body is healthy, maybe I can send my body somewhere, as it were, and use it in, in Christ's service. You know, maybe I can go and, and witness, maybe I could go and post some leaflets through some doors or whatever it is. But again, these things are our own choice. Okay. Um, <coughs> verses, verses 3 and 4. Um, Paul has been kind of defending you know, himself. You know, they were they were asking questions like, um, you know, why why is it why is it taking Paul, you know, so long to come? Why hadn't he come sooner? You know, he's had to defend his apostleship, um, his his standing as an apostle. Say, you know, I, I am just as as much an apostle as Peter and the others who who knew the Lord. Um, again, he he. he in this book, he has to defend his right not to take a wife and other things. So he's, he's, he's pretty much on the defensive a lot of times, defending all these things. But now here comes the point. Verse 3 he says, But with me it is a very small thing that I should be judged of you or of man's judgment. So he's saying, in actual fact, you judging me, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. You know, it's a very small thing. And he says, and I, I judge not, I judge not um, mine own self. You know, so he, he, he doesn't even worry too much about how he's judging himself, since A, his conscience is clear, and B, God will be the ultimate judge. That is really what he's saying. You know, firstly, his conscience is clear, so you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit there worrying about what you're thinking of me, or even to judge myself, because I know that my conscience is clear, but secondly, God is going to be the ultimate judge. And so he's really the only one that, that Paul is is concerned about. Um, right, so so coming back to this point, as I was saying before, he's saying, you know, as an apostle, he doesn't want to be overvalued. You know, it's basically some kind of, wow, the Apostle Paul is amazing, man. You know, he's, I'm just a servant. But also, he's saying, don't undervalue me because I've got something important to, to, to share with you. I've got some important uh, spiritual gift and I have authority um, from the Lord. But then he says, uh, he's sort of continuing this idea in, in verse, verse 4 and 5. For I know no, nothing by myself, yet am I not hereby justified. But he that judgeth me is the Lord. Therefore judge nothing before the time until the Lord come, who will bring to light the hidden things of darkness, and will make manifest the counsels of the hearts. And then shall every man have praise of God. This is similar to what we were talking about the, the week before last. Um, of the, in the previous chapter, verse 13, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it. In other words, the day of judgment will make it clear, because then all things will be made manifest, all things will be made apparent. Uh, you'll see into people's hearts, we'll see the motives, the thoughts, and the intents of the heart when, when they did and said the things that they did. And so Paul's saying, look, hey, wait for that day. You know, wait for that day and you'll see on that day that I was true, that I was honest, that, that I did everything out of a love for you. And so don't don't try and judge things that you when you don't know the person's heart, you know, but allow God to to be the judge. The the hidden things of darkness, the hidden things in people's hearts. Um and the, the, the councils of hearts, and then on that day, uh, men will have will have praise. The Bible says, man looketh on the outward appearance, 
but the Lord looketh on the heart, 1 Samuel 16 verse 7. So again, it talks about in the Bible, all things are naked and open to the eyes of him with whom we must do. So, so you can put the front on, you can pretend to be righteous, whoever you are, uh, before God. But God isn't, you know, before man rather, but God is not fooled with that because God just sees us as we are, doesn't he? He sees right into our hearts. So I think often in the world, people are very, very sort of pragmatic. You know, if something works, then it's like, oh, it's a good thing. You know, and they always look at the end result and it's almost like, you know, it's a, it's a means to an end. And if the end is okay, the means is irrelevant. You know, but with God, that's never true. With God, the means is, is as important, if not more important, than the end. Because you take into, into consideration those verses that um, Jesus talks about in, uh, in Matthew, Matthew 5, isn't it? Where he talks about, you know, if you're angry in your heart, uh, then, then basically you're a murderer at heart. If, you're, if you, you look lustfully upon a woman, uh, then you committed adultery with her in your heart. And so what Jesus is saying is, look, the heart matters very much. Your thoughts and your intent matter very much, even if you don't carry out the act, even if you don't carry out that murder, even if you don't commit that adultery, <clears throat> then what has been going in, been going on rather in your heart is just as important as the outward deed itself. So very, very significant that Paul says what he says here, showing us that that there's a time when God will judge the hidden things of darkness, the hidden things of the heart. Therefore, the implication is make sure your heart is right, even if nobody else sees it, because there'll come a day when all that will be will be brought to light. And don't judge other people if you don't know what's going on in the heart. Now that works both ways, doesn't it? On the one hand, don't be highly critical of people when you don't know what's going on in the heart but on the other hand as well don't don't bring forth gushing praise to somebody when you don't really know what's going on in the heart what their motive is for doing what they're doing but rather there's some things that we should just leave with the lord and say well the lord will know the lord will bring it to light in time so let's not 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 judge that just now okay